Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My project today is for Easter. It can easily be adapted for other occasions because it's a treat holder, but you can add small gifts and other small accessories to create this. It's a great idea for wrapping those clear tiny treat boxes. I've used some designer paper and the framelits from the basket bunch bundle. Lots of fun and easy to use and I'm excited to teach you how to use this really cute tuxedo bow on your projects. It lays nice and flat which will make it especially great for your cards as well. I want to thank my friend BJ who shared the idea with me. I did adapt the dimensions just a little bit but I'm excited to show you how to put it together. Remember you can find pictures and cutting dimensions for today's project along with a supply list over on my blog. If you're viewing from YouTube I've put a link down in the description below so it's easy for you to find it. I'm looking forward to sharing this with you so let's get over the stamp table and let's get started. Here's a good close-up of this cute cute Easter favor box. I'm thinking you can even put some small novelty gifts in here for the kids. Maybe some little Easter bunny racers or tattoos or stickers. Lots and lots of fun and so easy to put together. I'm going to use my Stampin' Up! paper trimmer to do some scoring. The great thing about the trimmer is the light blade is the scoring and the dark blade is for cutting. So it's a two-in-one mechanism, which I really, really like. I'm using a piece of sweet sugar plum cardstock. This measures two inches by 11 inches. You're going to be able to find all the cutting dimensions for today's project over on my blog. If you're viewing from YouTube, the link is in the description bar below so you can get there really easily. Scoring dimensions for this are going to be at one and one half inches. So I'm going to line this up all the way here at the top. There's a nice straight bar here to make sure you get a nice straight line. So one and one half and I'm going to score and then I'm going to move over to two and a half and score and now four and a half and score. The next one's at six and a half but here's the beauty of the Stampin' Up! trimmer. It extends to a full 14 and a half inches. So now I'm going to move over to six and a half which is actually right here in the groove. It's well marked. You may not be able to see it from where you're at but six and a half and then eight and five eighths and you're probably thinking oh five eighths I don't know where five eighths is. Well it's okay. It's between the half and the three quarters. So that's five eighths and nine and five eighths. So again between the half and the three quarters. Now I know those seem kind of like funky dimensions but that's because this is an odd piece of cardstock. It's 11 inches long. You'll want to use your bone folder so we can go ahead and crease up all those lines. A couple of these are going to end up going the other way. So that's fine. We're just going to make sure we break down that cardstock a little bit to make it easier for us to manipulate. All right. So now we've got that all scored. If you prefer to stamp, this would be the time to do it. I'm going to leave mine blank for today. And I am using these fabulous clear tiny treat boxes. Oh, I am loving these. They end up being a two inches by two inches by two inches. Perfect for small treats or gifts. They do come with a plastic covering over them. You'll see that. You're going to want to take that off. That's to protect them while they're being shipped so that they don't get all marred because they are acetate. This product is in the annual catalog. It's on page 176. You'll see them here. Really, really like them. They come out to be about 47 cents a piece, which is really affordable. You're going to get 16 boxes in one package. My best tip about these boxes because they are acetate is to crease them in both directions. So I'm opening it up and then we're going to put the bottom together. So I'm going to fold out and I'm going to fold in. And you're going to do this on all the edges. It only takes just, you know, a few minutes. It just makes it a lot easier to put together. So here's my tip. You're going to put the ugly notch side down first and then the ends and then the bottom. And what's going to happen is it's going to interlock and give you a right, really nice sturdy inside. Same thing with the top. We're going to fold in and out, in and out. This is a great TV project, even for the kids, something they can do. And there you go. So now we've got our box, but we've got to fill it before we go too far. I'm using white crinkle paper. I buy mine from the dollar store. Can't beat the price, right? I'm going to put a little bit in there. I tend to sometimes put a little bit too much. And of course, what are we going to put in next? Of course, chocolate, because if it's up to me, everything has to have chocolate. 
If you don't put the crinkle paper, it'll take eight pieces. I'm gonna do six Hershey's Nuggets, just because I wanna have a little bit of crinkle paper on the bottom. And I'm gonna close up my top. And then there's a really nice lip here, so it's easy for them to open. So now I've got my chocolate inside. This is where the scored cardstock is going to come in. It's gonna sit inside this middle panel, and you're gonna see how these easily come together. Now I'm also gonna point out this to you. Because this is an odd piece of cardstock, do you see how there's a little edge here that's longer on one side than the other? Don't worry about that. We're gonna trim that off really easy with a pair of scissors when we're done. There's no adhesive used here. I actually use the belly band to hold it all together and then the ribbon to hold the top. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna line these up. I'm gonna hold this really tight and I'm using the 1 8 inch handheld punch and I'm gonna punch two holes. I'm going to punch one here and I'm going to move over and punch another one here. They're relatively close together and they don't have to be perfect. This is pretty forgiving. But I want to teach you how to make what I call a tuxedo bow. You're going to see here on my original one how it comes out nice and flat. This is a great bow, especially for cards if you're going to mail them. It doesn't have any extra bulk inside the envelope and great for 3D projects. So you don't have to worry about it kind of laying uneven or coming apart. So we're gonna go down both holes. So I'm gonna use the end of the ribbon. That's the best tip I can give you. And I love my stylus tool. When's the last time you broke this out? Yeah, I love this. End of the ribbon, and we're gonna push it through. I'm gonna hold it over there so I've come to the back. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna go from the front to the back. Don't try to do this in the center of the ribbon. You're gonna be fighting it, trying to get it through the hole because you've got too much to go through. So you can see here, I'm gonna just move this down a little bit, just enough to grab it. All right, so now I have my two ends to the back. Are you with me so far? All right, now what we're gonna do is we are going to switch these. So we're gonna crisscross them, and then we're gonna take this end and we're gonna go back inside this hole. And I know you're probably thinking there's no way. You can. If you hold it tightly, do you see how you can see the hole opening? So hold it tightly and then push it through. And then I'm gonna grab my end. And don't worry about if it gets frayed because we're gonna give it a little haircut here at the end. And I'm gonna pull. And then now the other end, again, working at the end of the ribbon. You just need to get it started. You don't need to push the whole thing through with the stylus tool. And now we have the other end. The great thing about this tie is it's interlocking, so it will not come apart. That's just a great, great feature. All right, so now we have our tuxedo bow. I'm gonna take my paper snips. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a haircut. You wanna make sure you cut your ribbon about six inches. You don't wanna be fighting with it if it's too short. And of course, you're gonna leave room there to, to uh, trim it. So remember we talked about that little extra piece? So just hold it. Use the shorter piece as your guide and just cut straight across. All right, so there we go. So now this is packaged, but let's work on the belly band, the piece that's gonna go around. I'm using the designer series paper again from Succulent Garden. If you were here with me last week, you'll remember I used this on my baby card. I'm loving this paper, not just because of the beautiful floral succulents on one side, but the other sides are fabulous for everyday occasion type projects. And that's where I've gotten this gingham one from. I'm gonna put my seam in the back. So this is my back. I'm gonna start in the center, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna crease this around the box. There is no science to this. I tried scoring it. It was a little bit off, and it was just way too frustrating for me. So you know what, I said forget that. We're just not, we're gonna do it the easy way. So there we go, and then I'm just gonna kinda of crease it on the edges so I know where it's going to fall. I'm gonna take that off, and now we're gonna add our adhesive. So I'm gonna start at one end, and I'm gonna put tape every so, maybe every half inch or so all the way around here. And the ends on the other side. And you're gonna see how this is gonna have to overlap at the end. So you're gonna need a little bit of adhesive. You see how my hand here, so it doesn't stick to my work surface too much. And there, so remember, the seam is gonna go in the back. My sticky part is up. So we're gonna attach it here. And then you're gonna work around with those creases that you had around the front of the card. You see how I've cut the designer paper so I have a little bit of cardstock showing? So I've cut that a little bit smaller than the dimensions. So here we are to the back. And remember, there's tape there. 
and we can stick it down. All right, so now we've got our box wrap. The belly band is all finished. Let's decorate it. That's the best part. I brought out a piece of Whisper White cardstock. This is just a scrap and leading credence to the soft images of the, of the project. I'm using basic gray instead of basic black. So here we're using Basket Bunch. We're actually gonna use the whole bundle because gosh, there's framelits for everything. You're gonna love this. So inside here, I've got my bunny. So I'm gonna take my bunny out and there's different eggs, lots and lots of fun. So I'm gonna take this small one with the polka dots and I'm also gonna take this one with the stripes. Of course, you can change that up if you'd like. Clear blocks, love that they're interchangeable on your images. So I'm just gonna press those on there and then gotta have one for our bunny. Let's press him on here. All right, so now we're ready to go. We're gonna open up our ink pad and I'm gonna ink up my bunny and I'm gonna stamp my bunny here. Remember, framelit, so we don't have any work to do. And one of our Easter eggs, the last Easter egg will go here. I'm leaving room because we're gonna use the framelits. Now we're gonna do some coloring. I am using the coordinating marker to that cardstock. This is Sweet Sugar Plum. I'm gonna use the thick end, which is meant for coloring. There's also a thin side here that indicates, and that's for writing and journaling. If you've got really tight areas, you can color with that as well. So I'm gonna color in his bow tie. Give him a little bit of a fun bow tie coordination. I'm gonna stripe in my egg. So I'm gonna leave some areas white. Okay, and then I'm gonna come over here to this one and I'm gonna color in my polka dots. Just want a little bit of color, but I don't wanna bring in so much of this tone that it's gonna compete against the bottom of the box because then it's gonna to be too much. Now I'm gonna show you a quick little tip. I wanna give him a little color in his cheeks and in his ears, maybe his tail, but what if you don't have the ink pad? Well, how about this? Scribble your marker on your stamp case or on one of your clear blocks. Now you can use your aqua painter or your blender pen to pick up the color. I'm using my blender pen, so I'm gonna pick up a little color from here and you're gonna see it's gonna to be too dark. So I'm gonna kind of like lighten it up here on the side and I'm gonna go a little color in his ears. The blender pen has a chemical in it that moistens the tips. So I'm gonna give him some cute little cheeks. All right, and then I'm gonna add just a little puff of color to the tail just cause I can. Make sure you clean this before you put it away. So you're gonna hold it horizontally on your paper and you're gonna roll until it runs clear. It does get stained with usage because of the pigmentation of the ink, but it's not gonna hurt it. As long as it's clean, you can store it and change colors. This wipes off really easily with a paper towel, so you don't have to worry about it ruining your ink pad. So now, guess what? Now we're ready to do some die cutting. Now on the original box here, you're gonna see the grass. I chose a piece of paper from that exact same designer series suite. Look at, you've got succulents on one side. So I'm gonna cut the grass from here just for coordination. I'm bringing in my big shot and I'm using my magnetic platform and I'm gonna do the grass first. Now here's the framelits. Don't you love that there's something for everything? Inside here, I'm gonna grab the grass. That's the one I'm gonna use first. You're gonna see that it's a very detailed die and there are several others in here that are very, very detailed. I highly recommend this, the magnetic platform. You're gonna find that this is actually going to give you such a better cut than just this uh, magnetic platform by itself. But I got another secret and it's parchment paper. That's gonna help just release it. So I'm gonna put the parchment paper between the die and my cardstock or paper. So I'm gonna lay that on top of here so you can see it. Let me turn this sideways. And I'm gonna put that here and then this over the top. And you'll need just one clear mat for this because the precision base plate will act as the bottom one. I'm gonna lay that over the top and we're gonna crank this through. This Big Shot will only need one crank. Yours might need two. Every Big Shot is different. The roller tension is slightly different on them all. All right, so I'm just gonna lift this off off the back end here. I'm trying to preserve it so you can see, but look what's happened. So now we've got the parchment paper, but look, do you see how easy this has made? And look at oftentimes the parchment paper comes off in one piece. Isn't this fabulous? So, so, so easy. I know you're probably cheering if you've never seen this before. 
I didn't even need my Big Shot die brush for this one. I was really, really fortunate. And if you have some small pieces, just poke them out with your piercing tool. Like I've got one here. So let me grab my piercing tool and I'll just poke that guy right out. So now we've got our grass. Now I'm gonna switch framelits because now we're going to die cut the bunny and we're gonna die cut our eggs. So you're gonna see there's all different ones here to coordinate with the stamps. Gotta love that. We're not gonna need the precision base plate now and you're thinking, I don't get it. When do you use it and when do you not use it? Well, do you see how these are big open images? You don't need the precision base plate for these. The magnetic platform on its own is totally fine. So I'm gonna put a clear mat on the bottom and now here come my stamped pieces. So I've got my bunny. I'm gonna line him up. And then I've got a framelit for my egg. Now, of course, we're gonna to have to run this through twice, but that's not a big deal. They're gonna do all the work for us. And you know what? Those little eggs are gonna be cut out perfectly. I'm gonna put my clear mat over the top, and then I'm gonna crank this through, and that's gonna do all that fussy cutting for us. Saves us so much time. And let's face it, we can't cut nearly as perfect as the Big Shot can, right? So now we've got our bunny, and here is one of our eggs. And I'm gonna die cut that last egg for you here. So I'm gonna put one more framelit over that. I'm gonna cover that up. And then I'm gonna crank this through. You're probably thinking, well, this is sticking out. Well, you know what, that's okay. As long as it's covering my framelit and my cardstock, it's totally fine. So here we go, so I'm gonna punch that out. So now we've got our bunny and both of our eggs. I've brought in my silicone craft sheet. I absolutely love this thing, and I'm sure that if you've seen my videos before, you know it's a beloved tool in my stamp room. And the reason is, is whenever you need to add adhesive to a small area, it always ends up on our work surface. Then we're fighting that sticky spot, aren't we? So on the back of my grass, I want to add adhesive, but I'm afraid it's going to fall between the holes or fall outside of here, which means this is going to get really sticky. So I'm just going to run my adhesive on here, and look, the adhesive that falls on here literally just rubs right off so I don't have to worry about it marring my work surface. I'm going to put this piece of grass at the very bottom of my box. Now I chose not to cut off the excess. There's just a tiny tiny bit here. If that bothers you you can certainly do so but on a 3D project I think it's kind of fun. So I'm going to take my bunny and I decided he's not done yet because I absolutely love Wink of Stella. I'm going to bring you in a little closer so that you can see better. The clear wink of Stella is gonna give my little guy just so much shimmer. And I just wish that you were here closer with me so you could really see it. So I'm gonna go over this, making sure I get his cute little tail and give him that little bit of glimmer, that little bit of pop to bring out the white areas of my bunny. It dries very quickly because it has an alcohol base. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it's so pretty. All right, I'm gonna flip him over and I'm gonna put a dimensional on him. So I'm gonna put one here, his head, and I want another one here, but I was really concerned that it wasn't gonna fit. So guess what I did? I cut up the center of my dimensionals here while they're on the paper. That gives me a half. I'm gonna add my other half here. I'm gonna take off that paper backing and then I'm gonna mount my little guy right here near the bottom. So I've got my bunny, and then I'm gonna grab two more halves, because I was concerned, again, that these might not fit on my eggs, because you know what, I don't want them peeking out the sides, and they would've. So there's one, and then here is the other, and then we're gonna take off that paper backing. Sorry if I was a little off camera there. And we're gonna move these here to the center. So I'm gonna put my polka dot one here, and I'm gonna put my stripe one here. And of course, you could add Wink of Stella to those as well. Isn't he cute? So, so cute. So here's the one we made today, and here's the one I made before you join me. I bet you know a bunch of people who would love to get this this spring, huh? Make sure you head over to my blog for still pictures and cutting dimensions there, as well as check on the online classes tab. I've got PDF tutorials for you there, as well as stamps in the mail. I'm so glad that you've joined me, everyone, and I hope to see you next time. Have a great day.